All right, we have had solar up for many years, about seven years now, and I want to give you my perspective on whether it's a good idea or not. This is David Gilmore, known as LDS Prepper, and we live off-grid here in southeast Idaho. We bought our home here seven years ago, and one of the very first things we did was put in solar. This is uh, originally was a 5.8... A 5.2, I'm sorry, a kilowatt system. We've upgraded it to 16 kilowatts now. We did that at the beginning of this year. As you can see right now, it is the day before Thanksgiving here in 2021. It's late afternoon, about 4.30. So the sun is down, or going down, and we are still selling to the grid. So what we have here at our home is what I call an off-grid grid tied system. What does that mean? Uh, it w what it means is that we have an off-grid system which has battery backup. And I just did a, a video earlier this morning on our new upgrade for the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Please go to ldsprepper.com to uh, view that information. So I think that was a significant upgrade and we're gl very glad to have done that going from lead acid which has been very reliable to the lithium ion, which I think is uh, you know the latest technology. We're probably about an hour or so before sundown and we're still selling power to the grid. How has it worked with this um, upgrade to go, going from 5.2 kilowatts to 16 kilowatts? Well, when we first moved here, we were using very little electricity because we didn't have a lawn and we didn't have greenhouses. We didn't have an orchard. But since we've uh, been working on the property, we've added around 30 fruit trees, which are all irrigated automatically. We've got geothermal greenhouses, which are, of course, using electricity. We've got um, a lot of lawn, probably over an acre of lawn that is watered. That uh, takes about 10 hours a day to water. So the biggest consumption of electricity is our well pump. So since we've added those upgrades, we've also increased our, our batteries. So what we do is that we uh, generate power during the day. Any excess power that we generate, so over this last year, starting in January to today, we've generated over 19,000 kilowatt hours. And since we're grid-tied, uh, our solar panels are producing as much electricity as they can uh, because it's always a constant drain or uh, load through, uh, because of the grid. So out of that 19,000 kilowatt hours, we have sent to the grid over 11,000 kilowatt hours. We get paid full retail price from our electric utility company, and we've been grandfathered in for the next 25 years. So we're getting a full retail on the electricity here, whatever it is here uh, in the area. And so we're making more than people who are recently getting into this. Now, during the evening, I don't want to wear down my batteries. So instead of cycling my batteries in my battery bank, we actually pull power from the grid. So we've sent over 11,000 kilowatt hours to the grid and we've pulled back about 6,500 kilowatt hours. So we're about twice as much power to the grid as we've taken from the grid. And you can see here, for example, in January of this year, where we just got our system upgraded and back online. From the grid, we pulled 282 kilowatt hours. And to the grid, we sent 337 kilowatt hours. So even in January, we were actually sending more power to the grid than we were actually using, which is pretty amazing to me. Here in February, which was the only month out of the year that we actually did not send more power to the grid than, than we used. Uh, one reason why our batteries were in such good conditions is because we weren't cycling them constantly, running them when we had a load here on the property and we didn't, weren't producing electricity uh, because we were pulling electricity from the grid. So we're banking this power. So I can actually call or write to my uh, utility company and say, all right, go ahead and cash us out. And they would write us a check for the balance of the value of the electricity that we have sent them. But what we generally do is we just keep that balance there and we just use it to get us through maybe months that we have a greater demand than we have in production. Now I just noticed over here in November right now, 
we're um, actually in a deficit with the grid. To the grid, we've sent 305 kilowatt hours, but we pulled 452 kilowatt hours. And so this is pretty normal in the winter months where we have lower sunlight days, lower UV power coming to the solar panels. And that's why we have, we have it banked. Our battery bank is certainly large enough that we would never need to pull power from the grid. And with our battery upgrade right now, we could actually just turn that off and just run on our batteries with uh, 10,000 cycles, which will last us about 30 years. I still don't see a need for that. So we will still uh, pull from the grid during the evening. So my goal is to be self-sufficient, self-reliant, and to have power when there isn't power on the grid. We've done that, I think, very successfully, and you can see that here, right here on the chart. So would I do it again, and was it worth the money? Absolutely, I'd do it again, and absolutely, it has been worth the money. Now, you can see right now that we're buying from the grid uh, just a little bit, you know, 200 watts right now, because it's in the evening, and I want to give you a real experience of what it's like. It's not, you know, a lot of these videos you see, we're making 800 kilowatt, uh, kilowatts, and we're using 200, we're selling 600 or 500 back to the grid. We get that during the peak of the day, but here later towards the evening, that's not the case. So it's been a lot of money, but the government, state and federal, encourage you to go green. And so when we originally put in our system, we got a 9% check back from the federal government. Our first installation of the, of the solar was $30,000. We get $9,000 back from the government. And then we also, actually a written check, uh, two, two $4,500 checks from the IRS. And then here in Idaho, they gave us a $20,000 state income break. So they lowered our income, our taxable income, by $5,000 over a four-year period, which is $20,000 that we didn't have to pay taxes on. So there's a lot of incentives out there. But the biggest incentive for me, even if I didn't have any federal tax rebates or any state tax incentives, is to be self-reliant. And so many, many times over the last seven years, our friends and neighbors have called us and said, hey, do you have power? And our answer has always been, yes, we have power. And they were calling you, obviously, because the power was down from the grid. That's the main mission that we focused on for us to determine whether it was worth it or not. Am I trying to make money off of this? No. Am I trying to reduce my electric bill? No. We're trying to be self-sufficient. So most people who buy solar are trying to do one of the, the other two, either make money from it, from the utility company, or to lower the utility bill. And so you have to determine whether the cost is effective for you. And in generally in those situations, they don't have battery backups. They're grid tied. In those situations, they typically are wanting to get those installed at the lowest cost. So they have inverters that only run when there's power from the grid. So when the grid goes down, their lights go out. They don't have any power. They don't have any battery bank backup. So when someone comes knocking on your door or calling you or you see a, a, an ad for you know save money uh, and get solar, you have to ask yourself, what, what is the mission? And if your mission is to save money and, and uh, that works out for you, great. And if your mission is to be off-grid and be able to supply power to your property when there is no power on the grid, that's great too. Just make sure that you get it configured to, to meet your mission. Now, every single person that I know who is truly off-grid also has basically a second part to their off-grid system, and that is always to have a petroleum power generator, whether it's the gasoline, propane, or natural gas. And we're no different here. We've got 2,000 gallons of propane buried and we uh, have a tri fuel generator. So if our batteries run down for some reason, there isn't any light for three or four days and, our, and we're running strictly off battery and we can't generate any solar power, then we would plug in our tri fuel generator and we would, in a couple hours, recharge our entire battery bank and be back up and running for another three or four days on battery. That hasn't ever happened for us. That has never been a need, but uh, it's certainly there. And if we were completely off-grid, uh, we might have done that with the uh, lead-acid batteries, but I don't know that we need to do that or ever will need to do that with the lithium iron. Time will tell. We're really glad that we did it. We're really glad that we upgraded from 5.2 kilo, uh, kilowatt 
capacity to 16 kilowatt. We're very happy with the equipment we have. We have Outback inverters and charge controllers. We have the Simplify 3.8 kilowatt batteries. In, uh, we have 12 of those, so we have a 45 kilowatt system. As you can see here, I can monitor this live here on the, this application. As far as today, today being very close to the end of November, it was very cloudy this morning. So far today, we've generated 38 kilowatts. We've sent 24 kilowatts to the grid, and we pulled 9.6 from the grid. So you can see actually when we started creating power, which was at uh, 8 o'clock this morning. We have panels facing south, east, and west. So about a third of the system is divided between south, east, and west. I did that so we can get start generating power as early as possible in the winter and as late as possible in winter. And of course, the main panels are, are faced towards the south. I hope this helps you with your data collection and des deciding whether to go solar. I'd like to know if you have solar, if you've gone off, if you've gone off grid, or if you're trying to reduce your electric power, whether you have batteries or not. You know, just comment below and let, us, uh, let me know any questions you have or what your solar system looks like. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if you are prepared, you shall not fear. And with a solar backup system, a permit system like we have here, we're prepared for a dark winter.